All right, welcome everyone. My name is Bo. I'm going to give folks a few minutes to join in a quick little intro, um, and then we'll get started with today's AIA approved uh, webinar. All right. So it looks like we've got some folks joining already, so I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Bo. If you haven't uh, been to one of our webinars before, I'll give you a kind of quick little background about myself and about Ace Lab. We're helping out uh, hosting today along with the VM Zinc team who's providing today's AIA approved course. Um, so I'm going to just give a quick little intro and then we'll go ahead and get started with our presentation. All right. So as I mentioned, um, I'm with Ace Lab. So we're helping out uh, hosting today's webinar. Um, and Ace Lab provides free non-sponsored product research tools for architects, engineers, and specifiers. Um, this is a quick snapshot of our team. Uh, our team was founded by architects. I also have an architectural background myself, um, so studied and got my master's in architecture and practiced as a designer for a few years before uh, joining onto the Ace Lab team. Um, so Ace Lab, you know, was started by architects who all kind of experienced similar workflow issues. Um, here's a kind of quick example of what those uh, can look like. So just the ability to find product information, get in touch with reps easily, um, find your old project data, and have everything really organized in one place. All right, so with that, I will quickly jump over to our live site, just show you how you can find um, BM Zinc easily on Ace Lab. And uh, if anybody has more questions about how they uh, can use Ace Lab for their product research and their workflows, um, please let me know. I'll have my email uh, over on a slide in a moment so you can reach out to me directly and feel free to uh, schedule a quick demo. Um, so once you log into your account, you get this handy dashboard view of all the work you've been doing, makes it super easy to pick up where you've left off. Um, we've got a bunch of searchable product categories in our dark blue bar here that you can uh, use to get a more guided search flow. But if you know exactly who you're looking for, you can always use this search bar right here at the top, type in the name of any manufacturer and head right over to their page on Ace Lab. Um, so from here, you can get in touch with VM Zinc's team directly. Um, you can also save their products to your projects or to um, your general product library. And I find this is a really great way to be able to, you know, navigate multiple manufacturer sites, save and store your, your information in one place and not have to jump back and forth between multiple formats. Um, so once you shortlist uh, a few of these products, those get automatically saved to your um, products. I'm just gonna quickly show you what that looks like so you can kind of see the, uh, the benefit of doing that. So I've got my project folders here. Those have, um, you know, all of my projects and I'm just gonna navigate here to my products. So here's a bunch of products that I've saved. And once I save a product, they get saved in these handy comparison tables. So you can just quickly see an overview of product information. It's a collaborative tool, so you can comment back and forth, add supporting documents. Um, and then scrolling down, you can see you know, design options, finishes, performance data, all graphed out, certifications, and even downloads. Um, so just one click, and you've got all that information saved automatically over in your account. All right, so that's just kind of a quick taste of how you can use Ace Lab to, uh, you know, find VM Zinc products and how to evaluate them, um, you know, among other products and within your kind of own organization system on Ace Lab. If you're interested in learning more about that, please feel free to reach out to me at this email here. It's just bo at acelabusa.com. Um, and with that, I've got a few housekeeping items, um, and then we'll go ahead and get started with our presentation. So. First thing is just want to make sure everyone has a chance to submit their AIA number in case we don't have it already. So I'm going to send over a link to um, a quick form in the chat and uh, feel free to submit your AIA number to us there anytime during this webinar and uh, we will report your attendance directly to the AIA. And then I also just want to mention that um, we will reserve some time for questions at the end of today's uh, webinar. So feel free to submit any questions that you have to the chat. Um, we will keep an eye on those. If anything seems urgent, we'll try to get to it, but we'll definitely have some time at the end. And if we don't get to your question, we'll have a record of it so we can follow up after the event. Uh, other than that, we've got a few polls today. So please uh, stay tuned for um, those polls. We really appreciate your participation in them. Um, and then we'll also have a post-event survey. So if you've got any uh, follow-up questions, notes for the team, um, or if you request samples, please leave your address there with us um, so we can get you the information that you need after today's webinar. Um, all right, that should cover all of my uh, housekeeping items for now. Um, so today we've got Mike on the call. We've also got Anna. Anna's gonna be uh, providing today's presentation. 
Um, so thank you so much to the VM Zinc team for uh, joining us today. And thank you to everyone in the audience for participating. All right, Anna, whenever you're ready, feel free to take it away. Okay, um, just making sure everybody can hear me. <laughs> yep, we can hear you. Okay, perfect. Um, so my name is Ana Lorente, and I've been with VM Zinc for about 10 months. So I'm relatively new to the team, but I have a really wonderful team, some team members who have been with us for over two decades. So I have a lot of support, which I'm very thankful for. Um, I'm also thankful for Ace Labs for helping us host this. Thank you so much. Hopefully uh, we can get this started without any glitches. Um, we will have people on the panelists that will be able to answer your questions if you put them on the chat. So let me just start by sharing my screen. Okay, can you see my screen? I can see it, yep. Is it the correct screen? Um, it looks like I can see maybe your presenter view. Um, okay. Um, okay. How about now? There we go. We got it. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to get started. I'm actually going to turn off my camera so that you can see the screen a little bit better. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them into the chat. Okay. So we're starting off. Um, this is going to be a webinar on using Zinc as a building envelope. Um, as mentioned, I do work for VM Zinc. And I am excited to be presenting this to you today. We start off with this photo of the Barrett Center for Technology in Toronto, Canada. And I was uh, very lucky to have visited this site with my colleague who is based out of Canada. It's an absolutely stunning building that was created by Perkins and Will. And uh, during the presentation, you'll be able to see things being used from the 19th century to contemporary architecture as seen here. These are the learning objectives that we'll be going through today. Um, the first one being zinc history. We're going to touch on zinc production and sustainability, the aesthetics of zinc, roofing systems, facade systems, a few other systems, and performance. Um, the first one that we will hit on is a brief history of zinc. And when I hold this presentation in person, it's a little bit more interactive, but I'm just going to ask the rhetorical question here. If anybody can guess what this image is, um, it's, uh, we can actually zoom in a little bit closer and you're gonna notice that it is actually an aerial photo of Paris with the Arc de Triomphe located right in the middle. Uh, clearly that you can see that the main color from above is gray. That is because most of the rooftops in Paris are covered in zinc. So 95% of all the metal used in Paris for roofing is zinc. So Baron Haussmann chose to transform Paris in the 19th century. Haussmann was chosen by Napoleon III, and he decided to use zinc because of the nature of the architecture combined with the color and availability of zinc. It made it the ideal material. Much of the architecture required roofs to have a three degree slope. This is still the minimum slope for zinc roofs today as built. The reason for this is that going below the slope increases the chance of water ingress and staining. There are always exceptions, and we could always look at your project on a case-by-case -case basis. In modern-day Paris, we can see the Charles de Gaulle Airport. The architect Paul Andrew used natural zinc in a standing scene, and uh, he was actually very famous for, um, for doing uh, airports. He also designed the airport in Dubai, and it actually collapsed during construction. On a side note, the good thing is, is that one was not zinc. Another aerial photo of the Paris rooftops on the left and then St. Bartholomew's Church on, in Liege on the right, which is said to be the first zinc roof ever that was built in 1809. Zinc ore is relatively common. The richest areas are Peru and Canada and zinc mines also do exist closer to Europe in North Africa and Sweden. Traces of zinc were even found in the ruins of Pompeii. 
Bean zinc has been, has been producing continuously since 1837. The V and the M in the name Bean zinc stand for Vale Montagne, which directly translates to Old Mountain, which is located in Belgium. In the photos, you can clearly see different shades of gray. So that's natural zinc at different stages of patination. Prior to the 1970s, all zinc was natural zinc. The next topic that we'll be discussing is zinc production and sustainability. Durability and sustainability go hand in hand. Zinc has a very long life. One of the most important characteristics of zinc is that it's very resistant to atmospheric corrosion. The patina that appears on the surface after, after time has a self-protecting effect, giving the material an excellent appearance, which lasts for decades. Here we're looking at uh, the Picton Reading Room, which is in Liverpool and was built in 1879 using zinc. After 133 years, many of the zinc panels were, in, were, being, were needed to be replaced. However, much of the original open gap boarding was still in good condition because of the good design and installation. While the vast majority of the original design was kept, 21st century regulations meant that the panel width had to be reduced and standing seams were incorporated between the batten caps. The current corrosion rates are less than two microns per year, and a, a sheet of zinc is at least 700 microns thick. So 80% of zinc is deep mined. Deep mining helps with the carbon footprint. Zinc has the lowest carbon footprint of any of the natural metals. In 1792, continuous rolling began and this allows for coils of zinc to be produced with very, large, with very precise tolerances. Approximately 2.2 pounds of titanium and copper are added to the 2,202 pounds, which is equal to a ton of special high grade zinc in order to improve the tensile strength of the material. The zinc is then hot rolled before being rolled down the production line to the necessary thickness. Zinc used in the US and Canada is usually between 0.7 millimeters and uh, between 0.8 and 1.5 for facades, depending on the profile. We also carry a 0.5 millimeter material that is used to produce uh, the, composite material, the composite materials that we have. Zinc is a non-toxic element and is required by all living organisms. It is also an essential element taken as supplements, as well as used in products such as sunscreen. Due to electrolysis taking place at room temperature, less energy is required to produce zinc than other metals, as seen in this graph. Zinc is given a life expectancy of 100 years, and even at the end of its life, it is 100% recyclable. Now we can get into the aesthetics of zinc, which is my personal favorite. Um, as mentioned before, it's quite versatile and perfectly suitable for construction in both classical and contemporary art architecture. One of the main characteristics of zinc is malleability. Zinc conforms to practically any shape, including bends and complex geometric forms. Architects have great freedom in their design. Zinc lends itself to updating the look of outdating buildings as seen here. Here you're looking at a building that was two stories and they decided to make it a little bit more contemporary by and raised it to a little bit higher. Uh, and they used our gray uh, pre-weathered zinc. And then here you, on, on the right, you're looking at an old building that was probably built in the 1960s that needed a little facelift. So they decided to use the dark gray and the light gray zinc in combination. Zinc can be treated to give a wide range of different aspects, but always with a hint of gray. So these are four shades that are most popular for us. And we have three that have already been pre-weathered. This one that you're looking at here is the natural zinc, which is the shiny. And that's how it looks when it's first installed before patination. Then you have pre-weathered light gray, dark gray, and engraved zinc. There must be ventilation on the underside of zinc. If the zinc stays in contact with water, the zinc cannot form the patina and will not protect the zinc. This is why it is very important to control the condensation formed on the underside of a zinc roof to prevent corrosion. 
Zinc naturally inherits the, pe the power of self-healing. It is a material that can remain fit by healing surface scratches and damages on the surface. Not to forget that one of the most important abilities is the ability to resist corrosion. This means the building will be able to self-heal itself and be corrosion-free, reducing the stress of repairs. Let's see the abilities from the point of view of science. Normally, oxidation ruins material like steel by corroding it. But when, when the surface of zinc comes in contact with moisture and carbon dioxide in the air, it goes through a unique reaction. A protected layer of zinc carbonate forms on the surface. The zinc carbonate is, is essential for fighting corrosion and keeping the zinc corrosion free. Zinc carbonate then creates a magnificent layer of patina that heals scratches and other damages on the surface, thus making zinc a self-healable and corrosion-free material. These abilities have not, only helped link, have not only helped zinc last longer and make it healthier, but it also keeps the structure intact as well. Zinc panels not only help the architect in reducing the stress of the future occupants, but also reduces their maintenance costs, making it a very desirable material to use on your projects. We're going to now touch on the different aspects of zinc, the different finishes. As mentioned before, natural zinc was the only option until 1978. Natural zinc is shiny at first and then forms a patina when it reacts with water and carbon dioxide. After the weathering process, an even middle gray is formed and it takes time to be uniform. Many architects and building owners are not, the, are not very patient and will not want to go through that cycle. That is what it starts to look like when it starts the patination. Here you see a combination of zinc with limestone. Gary's building was opened in 1994 as the headquarters for the American Center of Paris, but then closed a year and a half later. In 2005, it became the home of a French cinema. You can see that the installation in 1994, since the installation in 1994, the natural zinc has formed its patina and now looks like gray pre-weathered zinc. Here we're looking at installations of the light gray pre-weathered zinc, which imitates naturally weathered zinc. Light gray is a pre-patinaed uh, zinc that imitates very closely what nature does to natural zinc. The finish will change very little for decades to come. When this finish is scratched, it has the capacity to self-heal. The gray tones blend well with almost all construction material and is ideal for refurbishment. Some of the projects that we're looking at here is the Borough Viaduct in London. Um, in the middle, you're looking at the Dolphin Yard in Dublin, middle bottom, Stockport Grammar. And then on the right, you're looking at the Rubenstein um, at the University of Chicago that was, that was uh, designed by Diller Scafidia. Another set of architects that won a Pritzker Award for this project using pre-weathered zinc. Unlike many conventional industrial buildings, this building presents a nice relationship between uh, the building and the adjacent railroad tracks. Now we see the pre-weathered dark gray zinc. This was first produced in 1978, and it is, goes through a phosphating process of the mill finished natural zinc. This was originally produced to match slate. Here are some installation photos. The Bull Pub in Berkshire, England. The middle is showing the Porter House in New York City, the meat packing district. This was completed in 2003. And I have uh, the, I actually walk by it quite often when I'm in New York City and it looks still as beautiful today. Bright is the University of East Anguilla in Norfolk. Here we're looking at another Pritzker uh, Prize winner, Christian de Portson Park. He designed this very ambitious building right outside of Paris. So this uh, building cost 100 million pounds to produce and it houses a museum, a library, 
and a science space that includes the planetarium. Here we see the next generation of zinc with the engraved in a lighter aspect. In one of the photos, you can see Volk's electric railway. This is excellent material to use by the sea because the salt deposits are less noticeable on the engraved sink with a lighter aspect. Another uh, local North America uh, project that is done in Edmonton, Canada, Stanley Milner Library also used the engraved zinc. And now we'll be looking briefly at some of the mineral pigmented zincs. A number of mineral pigmented zincs are available. Zinc can be treated to give a wide range of different aspects, but again, it will always have a gray undertone. Blue, red, green, brown, and gray. These are the standard pigmented offers. We can obviously do anything that is bespoke or custom if you give us a RAL, um, RAL reference. The pigmented range is not a painted finish. Rather, it is more like looking at light pre-weathered zinc through tinted sunglasses. The surface color is created by adding mineral pigments to a durable protective coating, and it creates a beautifully organic hued pre-weathered zinc. Some installation photos. Over here, you're looking at the Marchetto Architects in Hoboken, New Jersey, which they used every color of pigmented zinc that was available at the time. In the middle top, you're looking at the Spectre Hotel in Charleston, South Carolina. Middle bottom, John Copper School in Texas, which we'll actually see an interior installation as well in a few slides. And then uh, over on the right, you're looking at the Seattle Children's Hospital in Seattle, Washington. The next presentation objective we'll be speaking about our roofing system. So we will see different angles and geometric capabilities for roofing. For roofing applications, a double folded seam is recommended. The use of profiling and seaming machines for the closures of the seam significantly reduces the installation time. The top photo shows the protective film and all pre-weathered zinc is supplied with a protective film, which should only be removed once the, the roof is complete. The film can remain in place for up to two months, but should not be partially removed. So other, in other words, you wouldn't want to start removing it as it's being installed. You would want to wait until it's installed and then remove it all at the same time. Standing seam roofing is very flexible and it nearly conforms to all shapes of roofs possible. On the left, you're looking at pigmented red zinc in the Sky Pavilion in London. And on the right, you're looking at the Ballstone uh, Quarters Pedestrian Bridge in Philadelphia, PA. Zinc, as with all metals, expands and contracts depending on the temperature of the metal, not necessarily the air. So zinc must be allowed to move. It is a living wall. The, the maximum length for standing seam roofing is 30 feet. This is due to the thermal expansion of zinc, which is one inch for every 30 feet. Another reason for this limitation is the transportation on flatbeds. Panels that need to be longer can be roll formed on site to avoid transportation limitations. The minimum slope as built is three over 12, but for steeper roofs, panel length can be reduced. If you wish to do a one, over 12, a one over 12, please consult your manufacturer and make sure that this will be a weather tight installation. There are flashing options that you can create with zinc. The photo on the left shows a discrete saddle piece that can be used um, to form an upstand. Hanging gutters and internal box cutters are also possible. Internal box gutters must allow for thermal expansion. The right flashing must be used for the right detail, but sometimes different options are available. In this particular project, a G3 ridge offers a low profile ridge as seen on this project, which actually won the 2002 Ribbit Sterling Prize. It's the Magdalene College in Cambridge. There are options to include roof lights, either standing or recessed. For lower slopes under 14 degrees, 
The junctions on the roof lights must be soldered. The traditional standing seam is not an industrial looking seam. seam. A single fold fold is standard for walls with a radius. Double fold is stronger locking and is therefore used for roofing. A specialist job with specialist tools and recognized installers are always recommended. This machine is actually sometimes taken to the job site where panels are made for the project in question on site, reducing waste. Here we're looking at some of the most common thicknesses and sizes. For roofing, it's usually a 0.7 millimeter. For exposed sites, it may be necessary to increase the thickness to 0.8. And all of these are standard. You can also do shingles on a roof or wall cladding as well. The roofs must have a four over 12 slope and these can provide an overall texture as seen here. Shingles can also be used on roofing down to 15 degrees. Some of the most popular shapes are diamonds, squares, rectangles, triangles, and hexagons. And of course, can be customized for your project. Diamond flat lock can be used for roofing, but in most cases should have a, a slope of 45 degrees. Make sure that the zinc manufacturer you're working with can help design assist in appropriate detailing since this is not a watertight system. Now let's discuss facade systems. So clockwise, you're looking at the um, McCarran Airport in Las Vegas, University of Alabama, and then this cool shaped building is the Centro Evento in Italy. The system choice for zinc facades is extensive and goes far beyond standing scene. Again, some really cool projects. Top left is a residence in Zurich. Uh, top right, Felix Stowe Cafe in the United Kingdom. And then on the bottom, you're looking at a space center in England. Although zinc roofs are definitely much, much more traditional, wall cladding is becoming more and more popular for zinc. Here are a few examples of different uses and profiles. So starting on the top left, going clockwise, you have the Orbiter Museum in Cape Canaveral, Florida, Duke University Law School in Durham, North Carolina, Madame Tussauds, Los Angeles, California. You have the Peacock Museum in Connecticut, and the Mush Residence in Los Angeles, California. For standing seam panels, they will never be completely flat, but if you use a 0.8 millimeter sink, thick sink and single lock panel 16 inch wide will help reduce this. For installation ease, it is recommended that panels be no more than 12 feet in length. Here we can see an alternate substrate that was used. Galvanized steel can replace the plywood by using non-combustible, limited combustibility installation. A distance square in London was constructed using a galvanized deck in 0.8 millimeter thick sink. Scanning seam panels can be vertical and cover flat or curved surfaces as seen here. On the left, you're looking at the Petty School in Hightstown, uh, New Jersey. And on the right, you're looking at the North Carolina AIA in Raleigh. Panels can be vertical at an angle or horizontal. They can be curved as seen here. Using an arch bender, the minimum radius would be around 24 inches. This is a McDonald's that actually took over um, the building structure from a coffee shop that they actually made this structure look like a coffee bean. And then when the coffee shop went out of business, unfortunately, McDonald's went and slapped their golden arches on it. As well as panel variable uh, orientation, you can also do various window flashings and corner details as seen here. And here you're looking at horizontal standing seam cladding, 
Um, the one on the left is the BMW Information Center in, uh, at the Clemson University in Greenville, South Carolina. And on the right, you're looking at the University of Cincinnati in Ohio. Diagonal standing seams are also um, an option. On the right, you're looking at the Pimco School in West London. This is actually a theater that was created. Um, to me, it actually looks like the helmet of Darth Vader, which is quite interesting. And then we go on to flat lock cladding. So flat lock panels exist in all shapes and sizes as you're going to see in the next few slides. Here we see some examples of flat locks and rectangular panels. On the left, you're looking at the Woodcroft uh, residences in Edinburgh, Scotland. In the middle is the Yarram and District Health Services in Australia. And on the right, we see the David Rubenstein Forum again in the University of Chicago that was designed by Sc Diller, Scafidio, and Renfro and made to look like a stack of books. And a few more examples of flat lock cladding. You're looking at the Ansley House in Atlanta, Georgia. And then other shapes are possible as seen here where they decided to use a hexagonal shingle in several different finishes for the Empire Cinemas in, Ex in Essex. Engraved zinc at the Le Lester Sp Space Park was using trapezoid shaped uh, shingles as seen here. So this is the engraved zinc in trapezoid shape. Diamond panels are also very popular. Um, on the left, you're looking at Southampton General Hospital. And on the right, you're looking at Delhi train station, which used light quartz gray in a combination with pigmented red. Stamp shingles are very popular as well and can be used for wall cladding. It's very easy to install and actually has a unique locking key system. The next cladding option would be overlapping plant panels. So overlapping panels, or is it, it's a cost-effective rain screen panel that is installed horizontally. Horizontally, um, very similar to a ship flap look. The system is fixed with screws or with a nail gun, resulting in the panels being held in place with no visible fasteners. The panel depth is about 13 millimeters or half inch. A range of standing flashing pieces is available, thus simplifying the installation. Interlocking panels. Interlocking panels are probably the most commonly used rain screen panels in zinc. The material thickness is one millimeter and the panels have a depth of one inch. The metal facade pa panels are simply connected using an interlocking grooving, uh, interlocking groove, giving an elegant appearance of a recessed joint. Panels can also be perforated. So interlocking panels can be installed vertically as seen here. And in this installation, you're seeing a combination of the light gray, the dark gray, and the engraved zinc, which is really beautiful. And you can incorporate both sharp corners as seen here and curved corners. Interlocking panels can be installed either horizontally or vertically as seen in these photos. And then we get into corrugated zinc. So a corrugated profile in zinc that can be fixed to a wooden or metal framework. This is one of the few facade systems that relies on exposed fasteners. The system can be used to clad walls both horizontally and vertically. It can be installed on a roof However, a secondary waterproofing layer is required. The panels can be vertical or horizontal and can be perforated. It is made by punching holes in the sheet metal, meaning that the air can pass through, but the strength of the material is maintained. These panels offer an alternate design in zinc while remaining a cost-effective solution for a rain screen cladding. 
On the right, you're looking at the Poetry Foundation in Chicago. Elsie's Ellsdale Street is a major retrofit that was done in London, and it used both perforated and curved corrugated panels. So not only does it help with ventilation, but it also helps with security at night because you can see into the stairwells as seen here. We discussed in past slides that zinc is a natural metal that has movement. The right system must be chosen for your project. If you are looking for the more natural wavy look of a living wall, the single skin option is your best bet. If you are striving for completely flat panels, cassettes or composite materials would be best suited for your project. So now we're getting into some other systems, some other options and applications to consider. So the composite materials, the cassettes, and obviously some different design options such as perforations. As mentioned in the previous slides, so metal composite material is an excellent, excellent solution. So it combines the qualities of the combines qualities, elegance, and durability of zinc with the rigidity and smoothness of a composite technology. Zinc composite material offers unique architectural possibilities for facades. Composite materials are produced by continuously bonding two thin sheets of zinc to either side of a thermoplastic core. The core produces the sheet that is lighter in weight and easier to fabricate, and it's flat and durable. Zinc composites were used on the Stonehenge Visitor Center. The edges have, been perfor have a custom perforation that plays with the way the sunshine makes the patterns flow on the floor. Perforated panels have become very popular. The set panel size is a Cassette panel systems is a pressure, pressure equalized rain screen that can be installed vertically or horizontally. Panels can be installed flush or have various depths as seen on the left. Panels can have different, it can, can be up to four inches in difference in, in, uh, in width. For panels up to 24 inches the wide, the cassette panel is a great option. Max panel size is about 24 by 94 installed either horizontally or vertically. Panels can be produced up to 36 inch wide, but they will be less flat and resistant to wind loading. Here's a project that was used um, the zinc cassette panels in Project Vista in London. This was done by Scott Browning Architects. And here you're looking at a really cool bespoke facade at the old dairy um, near King's Cross in London. Here's a closer look at the pigmento green shingles that were used in the residences in Zurich. And zinc, because its malleability, can be both stamped and easily perforated to create images. The maximum hole size is three quarters of an inch and the maximum of a 51% opening. So the maximum hole size and openness is dictated so that there is no loss of mechanical strength. Another one of my favorite projects, Nighthawk Cinema in Brooklyn. The cool thing about this project is that it looks completely different during the day as it does at night. As you can see on the bottom photo, this is during the day and at night it lights up and it's actually a backlit perforated application. There are also perforated panels at the Eiffel Tower as seen here. And you could also do movable sunscreens as seen in this double tree um, in London. As mentioned, zinc can also be used for interiors. So for interiors, you would want to use a coated zinc to avoid excess fingerprints, as these will not be washed off as they would be in the exterior use. Zinc is actually natu naturally antibacterial, so quite often it's used for countertops as well. On the left, you're looking at the AIA office in Atlanta, Georgia. The top middle, you're looking at the Independent Public Library in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Bottom middle is the Elk River Library in Elk River, Minnesota. And then on the right, you're looking at the interior of the John Copper School in Woodland, Texas. 
Both solar panels and snow guards can be applied directly onto the sink with stainless steel clips as seen here. The clips clamp onto the standing seam without penetrating the zinc. Shear for forces must be calculated for steep roofs. Always speak to the manufacturer about your project. And finally, we're going to wrap it up with a brief discussion about performance. So environment, zinc is one of the few materials that is used in construction that can be re recycled indefinitely. It is 100% recyclable and can be reused in practically unlimited number of times without the loss of any of the chemical or mechanical properties or any loss in quality. Zinc is also non-combustible. A number of third-party certificates and assessments are available for zinc, including EPDs and ISO certificates. And this is not an ex exhaustive list, but it is some of the more common incompatible products. It's always important to know what zinc is being installed next to. So in this particular photo, this project located in Brooklyn, the architects had originally wanted to put the copper on the top and the zinc on the bottom, but copper has a runoff. So we actually recommended that they do it in the opposite manner since zinc does not have a runoff and wouldn't stain the copper. Always make sure that all the plumbing pipes are compatible with zinc if runoff occurs as well. A quick uh, case study on uh, Hurricane Katrina. These buildings were built in New Orleans in 2003. Uh, the Category 5 hurricane took place in August of 2005, and the winds in New Orleans reached over 140 miles per hour. As you can see from these photos, only minor damage was slight bulging due to the pressure, which eventually evened out again. And on the right, you're looking at the building with a blown out window. And then here you're looking at the roof that was ripped off, but the zinc remained intact. Other categories such as EPDs, traceability of mining sources, Buy American Act, et cetera, can be provided at your request. And thank you so much for allowing us to present to you. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to ACE Labs or us directly at this um, email address. And then that is our um, general phone number. We can always get in, you can always get in contact with us for literature, samples, design support, and you can always arrange a meeting with your sales representative. Awesome. Thank you so much, Anna. Um, and sure. as Anna mentioned, yes, uh, please reach out about follow-up information. I've also just launched a quick poll. So if you want to request samples, certifications, all of that good stuff, feel free to just let us know through that poll. We'll go ahead and connect you over on your ACE Lab account. Um, all right. So we've definitely got some time for some more questions. I know Alex and Mike have been busy answering uh, Q&As that have been coming through the chat. Um, so if anyone has a question that they would like to ask out loud, I always love to try to encourage folks to raise their hands um, and you don't have to turn your camera on, but I'll unmute you and feel free to uh, ask a question out loud if that is compelling to anyone. Um, can often be an easier way to kind of ask a more open-ended question or a project specific question. So feel free if anybody's feeling brave and wants to, uh, to chat out loud. Um, other than that, let me look through, oh, looks like we just got a new one. I'm going to look through some of these uh, questions that we've been answering and just see if any of them might be good to kind of chat about a bit out loud. Okay, interesting. So this one about um, how zinc does in coastal environments. So Jim had asked how zinc will withstand a coastal environment with airborne salt water, um, and if there are any special considerations relative to anchorage in these environments. Um, and I know Alex had answered that, um, but yeah, does anyone else on the VM Zinc team want to talk a bit more about uh, how these products might um, fit for coastal climates or for, um, you know, other kind of more specific climate zones. Yeah, I'd be happy to, <clears throat> sorry, didn't unmute myself at first. Uh, it, it can be in just about any uh, um, uh, climate environment uh, closer to the, the shore, like Alex, I think already typed 
the lighter grays are going to be better because the uh, the salt spray won't be picked up uh, visually as mm -hmm. much. Um, but yeah, really any climate, any any area, uh, zinc will excel in. Um, but if you do have any questions about a particular environment, we're happy to answer and consult on that. Great. Cool. And we've got some new ones coming in. Uh, so Anton asks, how does the cost per square foot compare with other materials for a residence? So for residential applications. That's going to depend on the, the, the materials themselves. So there's so many different kinds. So you, you have fiber cement type hardy panels or, or that you can put on the side or, or wood or aluminum. Uh, zinc is going to be a little bit more expensive than the, the usual ones like wood and aluminum and vinyl, uh, but it would compare to some of the higher end ones like the, the fiber cements of the world and coppers. Cool. And then Ron asks, how does 99 plus percent zinc help towards lead recycled material content? I'm sorry, can you ask that one again? Um, yeah, I think they're just asking in general, how does zinc help towards lead recycled material content? Um, we can ha get you that information using our EPD, but off the top of my head, I am not sure. Cool. So feel free to request certificates on that poll that we've still got launched and uh, we can follow up with that. You can also find EPDs, I believe, on Ace Lab. We should have all of that up. Right. Um, all right, cool. Let's see, David asked for cost comparisons to other materials. So again, for people who are looking for specific cost information, um, you have the option to request price quotes. Um, so yeah, feel free to request that and the VM Zinc team can follow up with some more uh, specific tailored cost information. Um, all right, this person, this is a comment, but it sounds interesting to me. So Zinc used at Alaska Sea Life Center. Um, it was an inert material on the coast and did not pollute the outdoor sea lion tank habitats. That's nice. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> yeah, safe for animals. That's good to know. Um, cool. Okay. Chantal asks about antibacterial properties. Can it be used in healthcare interiors and require deep cleaning, steam cleaning, and chemical cleaning? I will defer to Alex on that question if he's able to unmute himself. If he's not, we can always get back to that question. No problem. Cool. All right. Seems like Alex might be still muted. Um, so let's move on. And Chantal will have a record of your questions. We can follow up about that. Um, what are the advantages of solid zinc versus zinc coated copper? Another very good question. <laughs> and Alex is the technical manager and he looks like he's having some, we've had some issues today on Zoom with, uh, with audio. Um, but the question good. was, what is the advantage of zinc coated copper or actual zinc versus zinc coated copper? Yeah. I don't know much about zinc coated copper. So what we can do is we'll get back to that question because we have it on record. And then John says, you commented that flat lock shingles are not waterproof. Um, so would it require a rain screen installation? That's right, yes. Yeah. Cool, and then are there specific requirements or concerns for zinc close to grade? Um, six inches above grade is what we'd like to tell everybody uh, just for splashback reasons. Uh, that's just, just about any kind of facade you're gonna see out there. Mm -hmm. Splashback is going to be an issue with staining and, and, and just dirt buildup. So six inches above grade would be ideal. Okay. And then what is the minimum zinc roof slope? Three to 12 or three degrees? Correct. Yeah. And it can go lower than that if, if need be, but we'd have to review it with you. Cool. All right. And then this person asks, I'm not sure what this means, but uh, zinc mined, is it from Coates, Coatesview, Arkansas? I think they're asking if the zinc is mined in Arkansas. <laughs> not, not our particular zinc that I know of. Uh, we don't get it from Arkansas. Okay, cool. Um, all right, and do installers need to have specific experience with zinc installation? Yes, we would like to have all of our installers trained by by us. Uh, so we have pro zinc training where we, we go to them or they come to us and we put them through a few days of, of training on how to bend zinc, how to solder zinc, 
um, all kinds of different applications. So absolutely, we'd like to see the installer be trained specifically by a manufacturer. And then let's see, what about longevity on coated zinc for interiors? Longevity on coated zinc for interiors, uh, I can't, again, Alex isn't, uh, is muted, but I can't see any issues with the longevity on the interiors. I, it would last a lifetime in the building without an issue. Mm. And then this person asked, can I use a zinc shingle on a very low slope roof? Again, we could review it with you and find out if it's feasible for that particular application in that particular climate. So it's a case by case basis, like Anna mentioned, but we'd be happy to review it with you. Okay, great. Looks like Alex is typing in some answers to some of these other more technical questions. Um, so if anybody has questions in those areas, feel free to submit them. Um, Alex is doing his best to get them all answered. Um, let's see, Nick is looking for clarification. Oh, okay. So Alex listed one to 12 earlier. Most standing seam is two or three in 12, but three degrees is also not three to 12. That is now too much math for me. So I'm gonna <laughs> skip over those questions and let Alex handle that. Yeah, Alex can type that back. Cool. Um, all right. And then this one is a statement. Uh, oh, it's an FYI. Zinc that is mined in Alaska half world mining production. That's also why it was nice for the Alaska Sea Life Center. Oh, great. Cool. Interesting. All right, I think that looks like we have worked through, oh, one more. On a roofing installation, is there a manufacturer warranty, installer warranty, is it combined? There's a manufacturer warranty, the installer warranty would come from the installer. Okay, cool. Okay, great. It looks like we have worked through most of the, the open questions, and I see Alex is typing some answers to some more, and we have someone who raised their hand, so let's see what they have to say. Hey, Charles. All right. Hey, Charles. Yes, thank you. I, I've enjoyed this. This is one of the best presentations I've attended in quite a while, very concise and very direct. Just one confusion on my part. We talked a couple of times about the slope and there were two terms or two measurements thrown around. One was three degrees and three to 12. Um, which is it? Because the three degrees is less than one to 12. Three to 12 is roughly 14 degrees. So they're not the same thing. Three, three degrees is not three to 12. So, so again, am I misunderstanding something or, or is it different types of, of application? Three to 12 is 14 degrees. Right. I believe Alex answered that in one of his three degrees. No, I, so I see somebody asked the same question. Uh, we will have to get back to you on, on that. I am no roofing expert. I apologize for that. But I know Alex is, and, and he's muted. So, Charles, if you don't mind, afterwards, we'll get back to you with your answer. Not a problem. You can email me the answer. I appreciate it. Will do. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. All right. Any other brave souls who uh, want to ask a question out loud in our last few minutes? Going once, going twice. <laughs> All right. Cool. Thank you, Charles, again for that. Um, and we will be sure to follow up with you afterwards once we've got a, the a technical manager able to answer that. All right. We've got another hand raised. I love that. Like sometimes people really don't want to talk out loud. Sometimes people do. Oh, they put their hand down. But I saw somebody had their hand raised for a moment. If you did have a question, feel free to raise your hand. We'll unmute you. <laughs> All right, Edward, cool. Oh, looks like they keep raising and then unraising. So I'm gonna allow Edward to talk and we'll see if he has a question. Edward, did you have a question you want to ask out loud? Maybe not. Okay, cool. All right, then. Uh, with that, I think, um, I know Alex is still kind of typing some answers to questions. Oh, we've got one more from David here that maybe we can answer out loud. What is the name of the ore containing zinc? I do not know off the top of my head. Zinc ingot, I am not sure what the actual ore would be. Mm -hmm. um, 
we can get back to you on that one as well. Cool. Great. All right. Other than that, it seems like there's some cost questions in here and some thank yous. Um, see Alex answered minimum slope was one to 12. So that's great. All right. So as long as no one else wants to raise their hand and uh, chat out loud, um, we will let everyone go a few minutes early. Um, feel free to also submit any last minute questions into the Q&A. If we haven't gotten to your question out loud or uh, via, via typing, then um, we will follow up with you after the event. We'll have a record of all these questions. So uh, yeah, feel free to submit any last minute questions and we will be sure to get you your answers. Um, but just want to thank everyone in the audience for joining today. We really appreciate everyone coming out and all in the engagement. Um, thank you for asking questions and answering our polls. Um, and we will be in touch with follow-up information about certificates, um, AIA reporting, and all of that good stuff. Um, and if you submitted a request for samples or any of that during our poll, um, please check back on your ACE Lab account for updates. All right. Um, thank you to Mike and Anna and Alex for uh, joining us today and for answering everyone's questions. Anna, um, thank you so much for giving today's presentation. Really appreciate all of your time. Um, and I hope everyone has a great rest of their Thursday. <laughs>